हे गाइस लेट स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन ऑफ अनदर इजी पेपर फ्रॉम जे मेन्स 2024 सो स्टार्टिंग विथ इनऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री लेट अस सी द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन सो द असर्शन इज देर इज कंसिडरेबल इंक्रीज इन कोवलेंट रेडियस फ्रॉम नाइट्रोजन टू फॉस्फरस बट नॉट सो फ्रॉम आर्सेनिक टू बिस्मत लेट अस टॉक अबाउट ग्रुप 15 सो इट इज नाइट्रोजन फॉस्फरस आर्सेनिक एंटीमनी बिस्मत so the thing is this is second period this is third fourth fifth and sixth period so what happens as we go down we know as we go down the radius is increasing and the considerable increase in covalent radius is from nitrogen to phosphorus it is correct the reason is it should have continued but the reason is as we go from arsenic to antimony and from antimony to bismuth there are extra d and f electrons if we talk about d and f electrons they have poor shielding and due to poor shielding the z effective value is high if z effective value is high the size of the radius is low right relatively so the rate with which the size was increasing has decreased right as we go down the radius will increase but the rate at which the radius was increasing will decrease so the first statement is correct covalent and ionic radii in particular oxidation state increases down the group that is correct as we go down the covalent and ionic radii increases down the group that is correct so both are correct but the second is not the correct explanation as the correct explanation would be the poor shielding of dnf electrons so the answer should be 3 next question is very easy they are basically asking the electronic configurations if we talk about chromium we know chromium is 24 which is 3d5 4s1 and if i remove two electrons i will get 3d4 so one should a should be matched with third mn is basically 25 3d5 4s2 if i remove one electron it should be 3d5 4s1 so it should be matched with 4 vanadium is 23 that means 3d3 4s2 if you remove three electrons you will get 3d2 i hope all of you know that first we remove the electron from 4s orbital then we go inside then we remove from 3d orbital or 3d subshell cobalt only this is left anyways it was 3d7 4s2 as we remove two electrons we'll get 3d7 very easy question next question is orbitals of same energy are degenerate orbitals obviously 3p and 3d orbitals in at h atom are not degenerate that is wrong if we talk about h atom we know n equal to 1 has only 1s n equal to 2 has 2s and 2p 2s and 2p are degenerate for h atom for h atom only for other atoms it is not the case similarly if we talk about 3s 3p 3d all have same energy they are degenerate again only for h atom because for h atom we know the energy depends only upon the value of n hai na for others we see the value of n plus l we apply the n plus l rule but for hydrogen we only worry about the value of n so first is correct second is incorrect the answer would be 2 next question is from chemical bonding if we talk about water we can draw the structure of each of them this is water we know water is bent brf5 the hybridization is sp3d it looks like this one lone pair and five bond pair this is basically square pyramidal sf4 is a seesaw structure the lone pair occupies the equatorial position clf3 is t shape the two lone pairs will occupy the equatorial position so you can easily match brf5 is to be matched with square pyramidal structure which of the following sets of ions is diamagnetic 
सो अगेन अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम डी ब्लॉक एंड स्पेसिफिकली ऑन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ लैंथेनॉइड्स सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट लैंथेनम इट इज फिफ्टी सेवन इट कम्स जस्ट आफ्टर जेनॉन है ना सो जेनॉन इज द नियरेस्ट नोबल गैस जेनॉन इज फिफ्टी फोर इफ यू टॉक अबाउट लैंथेनम इट वुड बी जेनॉन then three electrons have to be added so the first electron i would add in 5d then i'll add two electrons in 6s that is lanthanum next we go to cerium cerium is 58 and we know cerium has an electron in 4f to so 4f1 5d1 6s2 let us write the electronic configuration for each of them first of all so neodymium is 60 it is xenon the electron is not present in 5d only in 4f and 6s so total six electrons apart from 54 two electrons in 6s four electrons in 4f orbital after neodymium let us talk about europium europium is 63 so it would be xenon 4f 7 and 6s2 then we have lutetium and gadolinium let us talk about gadolinium first it is xenon it has an electron in 5d so 5d1 6s2 and the last one is lutetium lutetium is 71 again it has electron in 5d subshell so we will have 5d and this will be 6s2 i hope you know gadolinium lutetium and cerium are three exceptions which basically have electron in 5d subshell so now let us see which are diamagnetic lanthanum plus 3 i can remove all these three it will be diamagnetic ce plus 4 i can remove all the four this will be diamagnetic this is our answer if we see the other options neodymium plus 3 if i remove three electrons i wouldn't get diamagnetic nature it would be paramagnetic lutetium will give us diamagnetic behavior but europium plus 3 would not give us diamagnetic behavior as we have f7 actually it has highest paramagnetism this again will not give so this is gone the correct answer is first again a question directly from electronic configuration of lanthanoids Next question is from qualitative analysis. It says when a compound on reaction with dilute H2SO4 produces a gas, gas which on passing through lead acetate. So if we are taking PbOAc whole twice, it is turning the paper black. That we know that we have H2 minus ion because we have we will have PbS which is black precipitate. So right, that is true. This is the confirmatory test of H2 minus radical lead sulfite. not sulfide sulfide is formed pbs is lead sulfide so this is incorrect first is correct second is incorrect the correct answer is two right if you are worrying about the first reaction it would be that we have uh, the soda extract of and it uh, of s2 minus basically na2s it will react with h2so4 dilute and we will get na2so4 and we can get h2s gas this h2s gas is having a rotten egg smell it can also react with pboac whole twice to give pbs right aluminum chloride in acidified aqueous solution so we have excess of water we know when this reaction happens we will have a coordination number 6 of aluminum because it is in plus 3 oxidation state so basically the structure is going to be octahedral sp3 d2 hybridization right correct answer is 2 the maximum number of molecular orbitals formed by 2s and 2p atomic orbitals of two atoms are question from mot again question from mot is coming in every shift if we talk about 2s and 2p so acha two atoms so basically i can have 2s and 2s it will give us uh, 2s 2s will give us sigma 2s 
and sigma 2a star similarly i can talk about 2p so we know about 2p actually i should draw here 2p is like this three orbitals so if there is no mixing we'll have something like this so that will give us the idea or i could have directly said this these are two orbitals these are six orbitals total eight orbitals would be there right total i'm sorry if we talk about 2s orbitals we are talking about two atoms so there are two ha huh, say 2p would be for 2p 3 3 yes the correct answer should be 8 let us count this as well 1 3 5 8 8 the correct answer is 8 element with iupac name un un unium so we know un means one un means one un means one so basically we have atomic number 111 and to determine the group number period number or block number what you should do is you should see the above elements i will subtract 32 from this so if it would have been 112 it would be 80 to 79 before this i should subtract 18 no i should subtract 32 again so if i subtract 32 again i will get 47 now i should subtract 18 29 okay this is copper right so this is copper cu ag au then we will have uuu so this belongs to i can say the copper family so it is 2 plus 9 it is 11th group 11th group this is fourth period this is fifth period sixth period seventh period seventh period 11th group block is d block right so answer would be 11 so let's move to physical chemistry now the first question is of balancing the redox reaction so we have okay basically the oxidation of iodine in basic medium i can say so so basically i minus and mno4 minus is going to mno2 and i2 this is plus 7 to plus 4 the change is of 3 i minus to i2 it is going from minus 1 to 0 the change is of 1 so i'll cross multiply the change this would be 1 here because this is a change of iodine and the change of mno4 minus i'll multiply 3 here but in the question i can see it is two times so basically i have to do two times of everything got it so you just double it we have 6 i minus 2 mno4 minus let us see how many water do we need mno2 i can balance through this mn so there are two mns here i2 i can balance from this there are 6 iodine here 6 iodine also i have got here plus i will have oh minus the total negative charge here is 6 plus 2 8 so negative charge would be 8 here this is 8 and corresponding to 8 hydrogens i should have 8 hydrogens here so the value of z would be 8 very easy question on mixing benzene and naphthalene freezing point increases decreases okay so we know benzene is like this an aromatic species naphthalene is also an aromatic species so basically they should form an ideal solution right and whenever we are forming an ide ideal solution as such the freezing point or the colligative property shouldn't change so the answer should be remains unchanged until now the questions were asked for vapor pressure right generally the vapor pressure does not change for an ideal solution we know pt is p not a xa plus p not b xb right for an ideal solution the vapor pressure remains unchanged through that i can say boiling point will remain unchanged and if boiling point is remaining unchanged the freezing point should also remain unchanged or directly i can say for an ideal solution everything remains unchanged 
So the option is fourth. Next question is from chemical kinetics and they are saying that the concentration of A at 10 and 20 minutes is this and this. Calculate T half. So if we talk about the value of K that will remain same. So K is basically 2.303 by T. Let us say first I am talking at 10 minutes into log of A naught. A naught is not given so A naught by A T which is 0 0.04 and since T we have to calculate T half I, I can also say ki that K is 0 0.693 by T half. So if I get the value of K I will get the value of T half and through another equation I can say 2.303 by 20 log of A naught by 0.03 so I think you can calculate Achha, if I do this it was basically 20 I am taking 2 here so I have gotten this same value if I subtract this from this subtracting the equation 2 from 1 I will basically get 2k minus k on the left hand side which is k on the right hand side we have 2.303 by 10 log of a naught by 0.03 minus log of a naught by 0.04 so log m minus log n is log m by n I can see a naught will go away so basically k would be 2.303 by 10 log of 0.04 by 0.03 this gives us the value of k and through that we can calculate the value of t half as well right log 2 and log 3 is given to us so this is basically I can say k is 2.303 by 10 log of 4 minus log of 3 so log of 2 square which is 2 log 2 so I can say 2 into 0 0.3 minus 0 0.48 now you can do Anna? next question is 250 ml of CH3COONA of molarity 0 0.35 molar is prepared what is the mass of CH3COONA required in gram so we know molarity is 0 0.35 and molarity is moles by volume so moles we are unaware of so moles by volume in liters which is 0 0.25 so moles would be 0 0.25 into 0 0.35 and the mass of ch 3 c one moles is basically mass by molar mass and it is given to us that this value is 82.08 again uh, just a calculation question so you can calculate the value of the mass right this is the mass of ch 3 cona which is required moving on to the next question the number of atoms in silver plate having area 0 0.05 cm square and thickness 0 0.05 cm is this the density is given atomic mass is given we have to calculate the number of atoms so basically we need to calculate the number of moles first and to calculate the number of moles we need to calculate okay everything is given to us we can first calculate the volume so volume is area into length or you can say area into thickness so the volume comes out as 0 0.05 into 0 0.05 centimeter cube and we know density is 7.9 gram per centimeter cube so through this I can say the mass would be density into volume which is 7.9 into 0 0.05 whole square now this value is in grams if I know the mass I know the moles 7.9 into 0 0.05 whole square divided by 108 if we know this value we know the number of atoms the number of atoms would be this value into N. So I hope you can calculate that. Right? We will get this answer. Given KSP of MgOH whole twice is 10 to the power minus 11 and the concentration of 
mg is this find the ph at which precipitation will start so the ph at which precipitation will start basically can be calculated through ksp is equal to K qsp so if we talk about ksp that is basically 10 to the power minus 11 and that should be equal to the concentration of mg plus 2 into concentration of oh minus whole square and this is given as 0.1 so through that i can see concentration of oh minus square is 10 to the power minus 10 right and through that i can say concentration of oh minus is 10 to the power minus 5 that tells us poh is 5 and if poh is 5 ph would be 9 the ph is 9 at ph 9 the precipitation will start again a very easy question they are asking the work done in the following cyclic process do you know that the work done is just the area under the curve if we talk about the area under the curve i think it is a i not think it is a triangle it is half base into height if we talk about the base it is 20 if we talk about the height that is 20 the pressure is in kilopascals so i'll write 10 to the power 3 pascals that is newton per meter square and if we talk about volume that is in decimeter cube we know one decimeter cube is 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube so i multiply it by 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube we'll get meters 3 3 will go away so that tells us the answer is 200 joules right so that is the end of physical chemistry let's move to organic chemistry again a question from IUPAC in every shape they are asking a question from IUPAC nomenclature so we need 4 methyl pent to in al if I see this this is I think this is the structure 2 methyl this is wrong 3 methyl this is wrong yeah the correct structure is 1 itself which of the following is more stable we know an aromatic species is more stable as compared to non-aromatic as compared to anti-aromatic so there is resonance here there is resonance here there is resonance here there is resonance here i can see resonance is present in all the four compounds but if we see the first one it is anti-aromatic useless case this is aromatic best case the other two species are non-aromatic which are moderately stable so correct answer is 2 the structure of allylic halide is ch2 double bond ch ch2x that is correct allylic position is basically the position next to this is allylic position this is next to a double bond right so this is allylic halide that is correct in allylic halide halide atom is connected to sp2 hybrid hybridized carbon no this carbon is sp3 hybridized this is correct this is incorrect okay it is connected to a sp3 carbon if it is connected to a sp2 carbon it is called as vinylic halide so a question from reaction mechanism but a very basic question if we talk about mg mg is basically helping to form Grignard reagent next step is basically carboxylation reaction we have a negative charge here it will attack we'll get CO minus and H plus is present so we'll get COH now we have ammonia ammonia is a base CH3 sorry COH is an acid both of them on reaction will produce a salt so we'll get something like CO minus NH4 plus but heating is there so we know on heating water gets eliminated and we will get a amide so till this point we have an amide and the last reaction is Hoffman bromamide degradation in Hoffman bromamide degradation the CO is eliminated in the form of K2CO3 so we will get an amine the answer is aniline that is second option again a very simple question oh we just discussed vinylic just discussed vinylic vin, vinylic halide right allylic halide we know this is vinylic halide all these are nonsense options what type of questions are we seeing in this j means 
Another question directly from NCRT H2PDBASO4 is basically Lindlar catalyst and if we talk about RCOCl reaction with H2PDBASO4 this reduction is called as Rosenman reduction we get an aldehyde group CHO group right next reaction is a reaction of formation of a dye as we can see the first step is the formation of diazonium ion so it has to be one of first second or third option aniline do not produ produce a uh, produce a dye and this also does not produce a dye of scarlet red color this is beta naphthol beta naphthol basically uh, produces a dye of scarlet red color so what happens we have beta naphthol and at this position we will have n double bond n and we'll have a ph or a benzene ring this is scarlet red dye so scarlet red dye is produced with the help of beta naphthol which sugar does not give reddish brown precipitate with felling solution so we know in felling solution we have cu plus 2 and eventually we get cu2o which is reddish brown precipitate the oxidation state goes from plus 2 to plus 1 and this is produced uh, this is present in felling solution if we talk about felling solution it is basically an oxidizing agent right so it can ox oxidize lactose it can oxidize maltose it can oxidize glucose if we talk about sucrose you cannot oxidize sucrose or the other way around cu plus 2 is getting converted to cu plus 1 so it is getting reduced so we want to see which of these sugar is a reducing sugar so we have seen in our syllabus all the sugars are reducing sugars except sucrose sucrose is a non-reducing sugar right lactose maltose glucose all are reducing sugar sucrose is a non-reducing sugar generally all monosaccharides and disaccharides are reducing in nature next question we have an alkyne which reacts with sodium sodium can act so the purpose of sodium is to get converted into na plus an electron now the hydrogen which is present here this can be eliminated and h plus on reaction will electron will produce hydrogen gas and eventually we are going to get a anion propionide we are going to get a propionide and this with the help of this we have to form this so we basically need ch2 ch3 and an x group this minus charge will attack here this will open up so we need c2h5br as y and x is basically this so second option is correct calculate rf value or rf factor if solute traveled by 3.5 distance and solvent traveled by 0.5 centimeters i think the values are reversed what actually happens in a tlc if we talk about a tlc what happens we start from this point we see solvent travels a lot of distance let us say if that distance is x solute travels a distance of y so the rf factor is y by x this is basically the distance traveled by the solute divided by the distance traveled by the solvent i think this would be either 5 centimeters because solvent always travels a higher distance or the values would be reverse and right? basically the thing is smaller value divided by the bigger value so 3.5 divided by 5 which is 0.7 if the values were reversed i can say the answer would have been 0 0.5 by 3.5 and right? since this paper is memory based i think there is some confusion here right that marks the end of another simple paper of j mains 2024 see you in the next session